Name the compound on the left. You say easy. I see the two pieces. Name it as a type one hydrogen oxide. And I see that both of these are nonmetal, so it must be a type three. So this must be dihydrogen monoxide. Hmm, is that right? Name the second compound. Easy, you say. I see the two pieces. It's a type three because it's two nonmetals. So it must be nitrogen hydride. Got the ending. And let me see, it's one nitrogen and three hydrogen. So it must be nitrogen trihydride are those named properly well you certainly use the rules properly but there is a problem here there are some exceptions some molecules are just going to keep a common name they're not going with this nomenclature stuff so you know good and well what the material on the left is called and probably know what the one on the right is called. That's right. The material on the left is officially called water and the material on the right is called ammonia. It's just memory, but some compounds are going to only use common names. And while we're on the subject of anomalies, let's look at a couple of important ions that you need to put the memory that were not derived from polyatomic acids. Now, we know that acids lose a hydrogen, lose a hydrogen ion for a living. But guess what bases do? They gain them. And the material you just saw, ammonia, actually can gain a proton, so it gains a positive charge. Not by losing an electron this time, but it gains a positive charge by gaining a proton. So it becomes NH4+. We give that a name. And that is ammonium. So the IUM ending is normally indicative of a polyatomic cation. And we use NH4+, as a monolithic piece when naming a compound. For example, NH4Br would be called ammonium bromide. Another ion you need to memorize is the hydroxide ion. Of course, the IDE ending suggests that it's going to be negative charged. How do we get there? Well, water can actually lose a proton. In other words, it can act like an acid. When it does, what's left behind? The HO with a minus charge. That is called hydroxide. So if you see OH in a compound, keep the H and the O and the minus sign together and use the term hydroxide. For example, the compound NaOH is sodium hydroxide. You name the OH as one monolithic piece, that being a hydroxide ion. So there's a few anomalies for you to keep in mind when you're naming compounds.